My name's Melissa Tapper and I'm a VIS table tennis player. I grew up in a small town called Hamilton, which is in the southwest of Victoria, 300 k's uh, from Melbourne. And I grew up there playing a lot of different sports, a lot of netball, basketball, athletics, whatever it was. Uh, and it wasn't until I was about eight years old that I first started playing table tennis. We didn't realise probably for a little while how good she actually was because of her modesty. She never let on uh, until yeah, we saw her in action and that girl's got some skill. <laughs> I first started playing table tennis when our parents at our holiday house brought us a table tennis table for my brother, sister and myself. And I actually wasn't allowed to play because I wasn't good enough. Um, but then it wasn't until a little bit later on at my primary school in Hamilton, my uh, PE teacher, Mr Fitzpatrick, actually uh, encouraged me to play table tennis. The school put a table tennis table in the courtyard of the school and um, everyone in, at lunchtime got to go up and challenge her, um, including the principal. And um, yeah, she pretty much wiped everyone off the table. So um, I guess that was sort of my first impressions of her and yeah, kind of noticed she was a bit bit of a superstar. The thing that she, I think, does so well is she's, she's learned how to just take a negative and turn it into positives. Um, so whilst, let's, let's call it the, the perfect athlete has everything and everything's in front of them and, and the world's their oyster, they might start finding more problems. Whereas I think with Melissa, she just, you know, doesn't have time for any any uh, excuses or any, any problems and, and just pushes forward and tries to make the most out of every moment. Simon uh, has the, the excitement of being not only my coach but also my husband. So um, yeah, I mean, he, he's an absolutely an incredible person and I can't imagine doing what I've done without anyone, um, with anyone else by my side. So yeah, he's a pretty impressive person to be able to push me really hard on the court and try and get the results that way. And, and then I go home and then I've, I've got the shoulder to cry on or the person to laugh with as well. I guess their passion for the game really showed at their wedding this year. They actually had a table tennis set up where they played competitively against each other. There was probably a few moments where it got a little bit competitive between the two. I think they've both got this secret competition against each other, but yeah, it was just a beautiful day and it really made it very special. My condition is brachial plexus, so from birth I was 11 pound 2. My mum gave birth to me naturally and as a result ended up getting stuck halfway. So I had to be pulled out by my right arm and that tore the nerves between my neck and my shoulder. She's got a restriction there with her service. Um, she doesn't have the flexibility to move that ball around like another player would. And then obviously just body maintenance, it's a lot of work just, just working with her, with her body um, to keep it up to uh, a level where she can train and compete uh, at, at, at a world-class level. For a table tennis player, believe it or not, we actually do quite a bit of training. So up um, for a general week, I'm up to about 24 hours training on court that I have on offer to me. Uh, I'm in the gym four days a week. I've got a Pilates session once. For a good table tennis player, it gets a little bit boring sometimes to apply yourself. Um, we can hit, you know, for example, at the age of 11, an Olympic standard athlete would be able to hit a thousand forehand drives in a row without miss. Getting the ball on the table is quite easy and you're waiting for that one specific one where it's a little bit of a challenge. The London 2012 Paralympics was the biggest competition that I've ever competed in so it was completely unknown for me what I would feel and what I would experience but um, yeah going in I was the fourth seed and at the end I finished number four I ended up losing the bronze medal match to China after leading two sets to love. I think it was a meeting shortly after that where she just drew that line and said this is it let's let's do it let's go for it I don't need convincing I don't need uh, pampering I just need real honest hard work going forward and I think any coach or any athlete would rather have that than take the medal and never really take that responsibility on. 2016 is going to be a very big year for Millie from what I believe she's already qualified for the Rio Paralympics but I think her dream is obviously to make the Rio Olympics so I think between now and March she's got a very busy time flying in and out of Australia playing competitions to try and qualify for that. I think, you know, whether or not she qualifies for the Olympics, it's still an incredible achievement. She should be so incredibly proud of what she's done. I mean, we're talking about a girl that lives 300 kilometres away in Hamilton to try and make it all happen. It's a pretty impressive effort. So if you can appreciate that, then yeah, if you could follow her and you could emulate her, 
you probably would. You know, we don't have all the time in the world, so every time we rock up for training, you've got to make sure you're giving it 100%. Um, yeah, and I mean, we, we do the best with, with what we've got, and we're doing all right. <laughs>